don't eat rotten fruit. Throw it away. Huh? It's just a little rotten. I'll cut the rotten part off. No, it isn't okay. Even if it's just rotten at some part. Do you want to save it for yourself? I... How about this? Let's magnify it 600 times under a microscope. We'll see if the fruit is still good after we cut off the rotten part. Let's take a look at a good one and see what it looks like. Look at it. The textures of the fruit are visible. Ooh. Remember what you see now. Now let's take a look at the rotten part. Here, all these are mold spores. And there's mycelium, too. Ew, that's gross. I looked it up. It could be streptomyces or asparagus flammus. <gasps> Come on, so what? I can cut a big chunk off. I want to eat the rotten part. You think it's okay cutting off the rotten part? Let's see. What these seemingly good parts look like when magnified. Since fruits are often juicy, mold and other toxic substances will spread within the solution. So, the seemingly good parts are already contaminated. Huh? But I've done that so many times that I'm not dead. You know, human body can defeat germs countless times, but you can't afford to be defeated once. So you fell into a trap when buying gold? Yeah, I'm so mad! When I bought it, it was 36 grams, and now it's only 26! What? It's 10 grams less? How did that happen? How did it become lighter after you bought it? I should have gone to a reputable store. I'll never find that salesman. Their scale must be faulty. Their scale? Impossible. I doubted its accuracy, so I weighed my phone on it. You know, even a regular scale can be tampered with in just a second. Huh? Within a second? No way! I read about it in a book. Now let me walk you through it. Using a calibrated scale, the gold weighs 26.8 grams. However, if you place a magnet underneath the scale during weighing, the magnetic field generated will not only interfere with the load cell, but also affect the internal current of the sensor. As a result, the electronic scale will display an incorrect reading. <gasps> How can we prevent such a despicable trick? So let's take advantage of World Book Day and indulge in Ryumo. This is too dangerous! How could you eat self-heating hot pot in a small room with windows and doors all shut? What? How is it dangerous to eat self-heating hot pot? Because I didn't invite you? <laughs> it's much more dangerous than you think. I'll show you. Caution. It requires professional handling. Do not attempt to imitate. First, follow the regular step. Add water to the water level line. Then cover it with the ingredients and lid. Whoa, it smells so good! Look, since the heating pack contains primarily these three substances, after adding water, the following reaction occurs, releasing flammable hydrogen gas through the vent. <laughs> But who in the right mind would do that? That would never happen! But in a confined space, the situation is not as simple. Let's move to an outdoor area and simulate the scenario to see what might happen when eating a self-heating hot pot in a confined small space. What'll happen? In a confined space, hydrogen gas could potentially reach its explosive limit. At this point, any small spark could trigger a devastating explosion. Nothing has happened. Look at your white shirt! They turned yellow! Yeah. Wash it clean! Your clothes turned yellow? Maybe next time. Checkmate! Invulnerable! Or mom said she would use it as a rat. Hey, I'll do it. Don't worry. <laughs> Clothes turn yellow should be caused by sebum and sweat. It's hard to simply wash it clean since it's been a long time. We'll have to try something else. If there's oil, try adding baking soda to hot water. Careful, it's hot! Soak the clothes in it. The oil hydrolyzes under alkaline conditions. Hey, it seems to work! For other colored organics, try bleaching with a little medical hydrogen peroxide. Soak it for a while. Mm -hmm. Can I clean my yellow pillows the same way? <laughs> Try it yourself. Finally, add laundry detergent and scrub. Rinse with water, and then the yellowed clothes will turn white once more. Look! Maybe we'll hurry up! Cut the cake into four equal parts of the same size! Huh? Cut the cake into four equal pieces of the same size and shape? That's right, come on! We gotta give them to four kids soon! Hmm, who ate this one then? <laughs> Not me! Huh? It's easy to cut a cake of this shape into three equal parts, but four? How do I divide it? Like this? Huh? No, 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 no. Like this? Hmm? That's even worse, even your little sister can tell. How about this? No! Like this? No! How about this? No! I'll have a piece, then it's easy. Nice try! <laughs> so, how else can we split it? Oh no! They'll be here in five minutes! Think about it! Think hard! This chart. Hey! I've got an idea! First, we divide the cake into three equal parts. Then we divide those pieces into 12 cubes. Why so many pieces? We can't eat them all! Since we're dividing it into four pieces, just put three cubes in a group. Huh? They're still not the same! I'll show you! Ew! What's the point of a microwave anyway? Mm -hmm. It only heats up food and explodes all the time! Look at the steam bun in microwave! <laughs> Looks like you need to know some hidden uses of microwaves. Bun and steamed buns will become hard if heated directly. So drizzle a little water before heating. Fill the mug with a little water too. Then cover the bun on top of the mug. Heat it on medium heat for one to two minutes. It still won't get hard, and instead it'll become soft and Ooh, fluffy. Yeah, this is good! Cookies and chips can get soggy after they're unpacked. Microwave on medium and low heat for one to two minutes. Not only will you make them crispy again, they'll also become more flavorful. 
Yeah, this is good too. Steaming corn takes time and a lot of work. Drizzle a little bit of water, put it in the microwave with the husk on. Four minutes on high heat and it'll be done fast. Mmm, this is a good one. And the last one. Mix sugar and water with the ratio of three to one. Heat it on medium to high heat for five minutes. And you've got a syrup. You've dipped a skewer of fruit into the syrup and you've got homemade sugar-coated fruit. So there's no such thing as an impractical tool, only unscientific usage. Hey, Wu, come over here. Let me pick a sweet watermelon for you. It's gonna be great. Okay, it's really cool. You're mocking me? I'll eat the red ball if you can pick a sweet watermelon with red pulp. Oh, my dad taught me how to pick watermelons. Let's give it a try. Just so you know, if the watermelon isn't ripe, you're gonna eat it alone. No problem. Let's take the cheated melon as an example. Keep in mind three words. The first word, the vine. A ripe melon no longer needs to transport nutrients, so its vine will slowly bend. While less ripe melons are not yet weak, so its vine is still straight. Also keep in mind that if the vine dries up, the watermelon has been picked long ago, so it may not be fresh enough. But what about the ones without vines, like this one? Here comes the second word, the rind. Oh, I know the answer! Pat each of the watermelons and ask, Sir, is this watermelon ripe? <laughs> Look, tap the watermelon. If the sound is low, it means it's ripe. If the sound is crisp, it means it's raw. I just can't tell. That's all right. There is another way. Hold it up with one hand and pat it. If the vibration is transmitted to the hand and shake your hand, then it's right. Ooh. The third word, the stripes. According to my dad, the darker the color, the clearer the line, the thinner the rind, also the sweeter it tastes. This one is clearer strips than the one on the right. So taking all of the above into consideration, I pick this one. The curved vine, the vibration, the deep and clear strips, in the big one! Then let's cut it open! So what if it's pretty? That doesn't mean it's sweet! Then let's use a saccharometer to measure its sugar content. It's sweet if the reading is above 13. The sugar content turns out to be 14.5. Good luck finding the sweetest watermelon. Miu, I bet you didn't know that you could use a ruler like mm -hmm. this. Look, now it's standing! What? Quite interesting. Hey, you've never played this trick when you were a student? <laughs> What are you doing? Believe it or not, if I hang a hammer on the ruler, I can make the ruler stand up. Use a hammer to stand the ruler? Like this? Or this? How can we make the ruler stand it right? When the hammer is too heavy to hang on the ruler! Come on, leave it to me. Just tie one end of the rope to the ruler and the other end near the hammer head. Then place one end of the ruler on the edge of the table. It's not gonna work! The hammer will fall and damage the floor! Don't worry. Although the structure appears precarious, each component achieves a state of lever balance and overall center of gravity is just below the support point. As a result, the rule can be stood upright on the table. Oh!